Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash malicious compliance. In today's episode, X's divorce lawyer, send three years of complete financials or else. Me, as you wish. Apparently you're dead. Received someone else's frequently flyer gift. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. X's divorce lawyer, send three years of complete financials or else. Me, as you wish. This happened several years ago when my ex and I were going through a heated divorce slash custody battle. While we were married, we had a couple of conversations about how rich people hide their assets to avoid paying taxes. I've never had enough assets to do this, but she somehow got the idea that I was and told her attorney that I was laundering money and hiding income. It was more likely the heat of the moment as divorce slash custody battles often come down to. I couldn't even afford my own attorney, so I represented myself. Her lawyer wasn't a total ass, but he clearly was out to get me, and he talked down to me like I didn't deserve to breathe the same air. One day, I get a letter in the mail from him requesting an updated income declarations form and three years of financials. It had a long list of things to include. I own a communications tech company that was in super startup phase back then. Money was already tight. I was trying to get this business off the ground with no financing, I was finishing my MBA with scholarships and loans, so paying for copies and postage or driving this 30 miles to his office meant eating peanut butter and saltines for a week. So I called him to explain my situation. He all but called me a liar and didn't believe I couldn't afford it. I was put off by that, and I said this was taking time away from business I needed to handle. To which he replied, and I'll never forget this, well, according to your income declarations, you're not that busy. What do you do all day? He then said if he didn't get these documents, he would consider my previous filings as fraudulent tell the judge, contact the DA, and also alert the state tax agency and IRS. Probably an empty threat, but I'm no lawyer. AFAX is one of the services my company provides, and at this time it was relatively unknown. So I asked him if he has a fax machine. He said he had a fax slash scanner slash copier device, then said what law office doesn't have a fax machine. And I suddenly got an idea. Okay, I said to him, I'll put together and fax whatever I can. Okay, mother f asterisk cur. You want three years of financials? You got it. I scanned to PDF every receipt I could find. McDonald's receipt from five years ago? F asterisk CK it, won't hurt to include it. CVS receipt? It's three miles long, perfect. They get the one dollar off toothpaste coupons too. I downloaded every bank statement, credit card statement, purchase orders from vendors, and every invoice I sent to clients. I printed to PDF the entire three-year accounting journal, monthly slash quarterly slash annual balance sheets, cash flow statements, P&Ls. Not only did I PDF three years of tax filings, but every single letter I received from the IRS and state tax agency, including the inserts advising me of my rights. It took a while, but I was a few days ahead of the deadline. I made a cover page black background with white lettering. Wherever I could, I included separator pages in all caps in the biggest, boldest font that would fit on the page in landscape, 20xx receipts, 20xx taxes, etc. I merged everything into a single 150-plus page compressed PDF and sent the document using my fax system. Every hour or so, I received a status email saying the fax failed. Huh, that's weird. Well, they're getting this document. So I changed the system configuration to unlimited retries after failures to keep redialing until it went through. Weird, I was still getting status email failures. I'll delete the failure emails and keep the success one after it eventually goes through, I thought. Problem solved. Two days later, a lady from his office called and asked me to stop sending the fax. Their fax slash scanner slash printer slash copier had been printing non-stop. 
It kept getting paper jams, kept running out of ink, and they had to keep shutting it off and back onto print. I explained that her boss told me to send this by the deadline or else he would call the DA and IRS. Since I didn't want a call from the DA or the IRS, I would keep sending until I get a success confirmation. I suggested they just not print until my fax completes, but she didn't like that. She asked me to email the documents, and I told a little white lie that my email wouldn't allow an attachment that big. Unless her boss in writing agreed to cancel the request or agree to reimburse me for my costs to print and ship, I said I would continue to fax until they confirm they have received every page. She put me on hold, and the attorney gets on the line. He said forget sending the financials. I said that I would need this in writing, so I will keep sending the fax until he sent that to me. He asked me to stop faxing, and he would send it in writing, and I said send it in writing first, and then I'll stop. Long moment of silence, click. About 20 minutes later, I received an email from his assistant with an attached, signed letter in PDF that I no longer needed to provide financials. The letter then threatened to pursue sanctions in court or sue me for interfering with their business. Every time I saw him after that, the lawyer never brought up sanctions, lawsuits, criminal referrals, or financials again. Apparently you're dead. I used to work for AFES, think Walmart, but on US military bases, and I worked at the customer service counter where people would come to do various things, such as pay their star card, store credit card, bill. During this time the causalities coming in from Iraq slash Afghanistan were pretty constant and shortly prior to this interaction I got briefed on what it meant if I saw the deceased card. I got the feeling we had several customers who died in Iraq and the policy was put in place as AFES likely didn't want the bad PR on trying to collect debt from widows. Which, I mean is a good idea. It meant the card was closed, all debt was written off, and all automatic payments were cancelled. Well if you've ever worked or dealt with AFES you understand they are incredibly incompetent. Well one day I'm working and a woman comes up to me and says I'm Mrs. Jackson, I would like to make a payment on my star card I said that's fine, can I see your ID or star card, he gave me her star card and I asked and how much will you be paying today, to which she said $1,500. I opened her account, and in big bright red letters her account status was deceased her balances were zeroed out confused I asked her how much she owed on the account. She said approximate $4,000. Thinking maybe I opened the wrong account I asked if she had her star card so I could enter the exact account number. She gave me her star card. Same status, she's dead, she owes us no more money. And I said Miss Jackson I have good news and bad news to which she gave me a frustrated look and said what's the bad news I said apparently you're dead she laughs and says I feel very much alive I nod my head and go I agree, you do appear to be alive. So she goes so what's the good news? I smile and say you don't owe us any more money she goes what? I go per our policy if a customer dies we close their account and write off their debt concern she goes well is this going get sent to collections? I ask were you past due, she goes no I wasn't I go let me call my manager so I call my manager and I ask my manager if a customer is declared deceased, do we send their debt to a collection agency he goes no. It's written off so I relay that information. She starts to smile, and then she goes so can I use my star card? I go no, it's been closed, but if you want to open another account you can. So we opened another account, yes it worked and she was approved. I dealt with Mrs. Jackson several times over the next year, as she liked to come in person to make the payment. I nicknamed her zombie a nickname which she embraced. When she would approach me, I would go ah the zombie is back and she would smile and joke be nice or I'll eat you we kept it as an inside joke my coworkers were always confused. Received someone else's frequently flyer gift. My new wife and I recently took a trip to Denver on a United flight. I fly often but not as often as some other people. When I booked the flight the plane was fairly empty, so I booked the window and all seats in premium economy section right behind first class seats leaving the middle seat empty. By the time we actually flew the flight was nearly full so I checked the seat chart and noticed someone took the seat between us. 
No biggie, when we get on the flight we will just offer the window, or aisle seat to whoever booked the middle seat. Boarding time came and we were in group 2, so the pre-boards in group 1 got to go before us. When it was our turn to board and we got to our seats, there was an older man seating in the window seat. I thought that was kind of a dick move to just take someone else's seat without asking. Obviously this guy has flown before since he had pre-boarding status without having young kids, was not disabled and definitely wasn't in the military. I let it go since we were going to switch seats anyway. Soon after the flight took off the attendant came up to me with a gift bag and congratulated me for achieving 1k status. The gift bag wasn't for me it was for the guy that took the window seat without asking. He obviously knew what he was doing and has probably done this before. The guy was looking out the window all through boarding and never turned his head to acknowledge us until the flight attendant came over with the gift bag. I accepted his gift bag and the flight attendant asked if I'd like a complimentary drink as well. Of course I said yes and even got a free glass of wine for my wife too. I glanced at the guy and could see the anger in his eyes. But he didn't say a thing. Petty win for me over this guy that took my seat that I would have given him, but instead he took it without asking. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.